What is a Bitcoin ETF? You've probably heard the term Bitcoin ETF thrown around lately, but do you actually know what it is and why the entire crypto world is so excited about it? Let's break this down step by step. First, ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. It's a type of investment that lets you easily buy or sell an asset on the stock market, just like a share of Apple or Tesla. A Bitcoin ETF works the same way. It would give you exposure to Bitcoin's price movements without having to actually buy any coins yourself. The fund would invest in either actual Bitcoin or derivatives derivatives tied to Bitcoin's price. Depending on the type of ETF that you go for, you simply buy a share of the ETF through a normal brokerage app instead of dealing with crypto exchanges. Now you might be wondering why Bitcoin ETFs are causing such excitement in the crypto community. Well, they provide an easy path to invest in crypto to big players on Wall Street who find Bitcoin confusing and risky. Pension funds, hedge funds, family offices, they manage trillions of dollars but have steered clear of crypto so far because of its complexity and regulation issues. Bitcoin ETFs listed right next to other stock ETFs bring a feeling of legitimacy and regulatory oversight. So Bitcoin ETFs could trigger mass adoption by inviting huge pools of institutional capital. We're talking retirement funds, university endowments, and more. And with more investors buying in, increased demand would likely send Bitcoin prices shooting upwards. No wonder the crypto community wants the SEC to hurry up and approve an ETF. In short, Bitcoin ETFs would allow both retail and institutional investors to easily invest in this hot new asset class. So the question is, if Bitcoin ETFs unlock the floodgates, how long would it take Bitcoin's market cap to go above gold's market cap? Let me know. The Bitcoin ETF has been approved, but here is what they are not telling you. The Bitcoin ETF, it's only a small part of the entire picture. And we're going to break down the math behind the Bitcoin ETF and why it's so big and so important and how much the price can pump because of the Bitcoin ETF, what some of those estimates are actually looking like and why that's only a tiny part of the picture, why you're not being told the whole story and what the whole story is, because it's absolutely insane when you start to realize what the heck is actually going on here. It's nuts. And probably no one is nearly bullish enough for what is coming. It's crazy. Strap in. Let's do it. Okay, so first, let's talk about the reality. The Bitcoin ETF, it's here. It's approved. It's going to start trading on U.S. markets imminently. In the next hour or so, probably from the time we upload this video, you will see spot Bitcoin ETFs. We're going to start seeing real cash inflows starting to happen. Now, why are Bitcoin ETFs important? Well, a report from Galaxy points out the key reasons. Greater reach for both retail and institutional investors, most of which have stayed out of Bitcoin because it's been too hard to get or they have been prohibited from getting or scared of getting it distribution through more investment channels. So basically now we're going to see financial advisors and fiduciaries and all these different wealth management services shilling Bitcoin to their customers. I love it. Greater wealth opportunity. Boomers in early year, uh, age 59 plus, hold 62% of U.S. wealth, yet only 8% of adults age 50 plus have invested in crypto versus 25% for adults 18 to 49. Huge opportunity here for unlocking new wealth to come into Bitcoin. And of course, new inheritances in the future for the millennials whose uh, boomer parents buy uh, or boomer grandparents buy Bitcoin ETFs and then pass them down later on. Of course, the formal recognition legitimacy from trusted brands like this is massive. We've just got a huge, huge signal that the water's OK. Bitcoin's a normal asset that you can buy from BlackRock. That's insane. Of course, addresses all the regulatory and compliance concerns. We now have regulatory clarity for Bitcoin in the USA. That's a hard thing to just understate or to overstate how important that is. It's absolutely massive. Also, portfolio benefits and acceptance of Bitcoin as an asset class. Tax efficiencies, all the rest of the stuff. It's crazy. Huge, huge, huge news. Very big moment. Now, I mentioned Galaxy because Galaxy has given us some great moon math. So Bank of America estimates that $93 million of fresh cash moves the price of Bitcoin to 1%. Galaxy Digital gives a possible conservative, potentially conservative estimate of new cash inflows into Bitcoin thanks to the ETF. $14 billion in year one, $26.2 billion in year two, and 38.6. That's cumulative by year three. Now, I've seen wild ranges in the estimates. Standard Chartered Bank saying we could have $100 billion coming to Bitcoin next year. That's a big estimate. Big if true. 
Others, some major ETF analysts saying we could even see $50 billion this year. How much does that actually move the price? Well, obviously, look, this math here is very much subject to wild moves in the markets. As price goes up, new Bitcoin enters circulation, might have been held for years, all that kind of stuff. So there's a very elastic flow here to the numbers we're talking about. This is just rough moon math, okay? Rough moon math. Assuming Galaxy is right, and that a billion dollars is going to basically equal 11% gains. So every remember, every 93 million, according to Bank of America, moves the price 1%. Galaxy's saying this is the inflows we're going to get. So year one, 158% gains. It's 125,000 Bitcoin from around the current price. Year two, 291% gains. That brings up $180,000 from the current price. That's in 2025. And again, if Galaxy's inflow numbers are correct, then we have 424% gains from here up to $250,000 approximately in 2026. Not bad. Not bad. I'll take 400% gains on my Bitcoins. I dig it. Now, these are the kind of gains, of course, would also be in line with the gains that were put in by gold once its ETF was launched. So there's precedent for these kind of moves to happen. Now, the flip side is if, what if Galaxy is just not being bullish enough? What if, like the analysts at Standard Chartered, are more in line with what reality is going to be? And we're going to see 1,000%. 1,000% gains. Bitcoin's going to half a million dollars in the next two or three years. That could also happen. Bullish. Bullish, right? Very, very big potential with all this new cash flooding in. But the Bitcoin ETF is only a small part of the picture. I hear, again, Eric uh, Balkunis saying that they could see $50 billion within two years. Kathy Wood's saying that they're out. Uh, she's the CEO of ARK Invest. One of the guys who just got the Bitcoin ETF approved saying that we're talking to state pension funds and state treasurers about investing in Bitcoin ETFs. It's coming. An avalanche of money that you can't imagine is coming. And it doesn't happen overnight. Oh, but it's coming. Watch out. Now, before we get into the big story here, because this is just a small part, a very exciting part of the story, a new part of the story, a new chapter in Bitcoin's history, but just a small part, what we have to discuss next even had the Bitcoin ETF never been approved, Bitcoin was still going to hundreds of thousands of dollars and a million dollars one day because of everything I have to tell you next. Before we do that, I just want to let you know, if you're not signed with the Wealth Master newsletter, you got to get checked out. Best damn newsletter in the cryptocurrency industry. Every single issue jam-packed full of alpha. We talk about DeFi. We talk about altcoins. We have altcoin alpha, altcoin news, deep dive altcoin reports, tutorials, NFT mints, airdrops, airdrops, airdrops. It's crazy. You got to check it out. Best damn newsletter in the industry, read by over 100,000 people every single week. You can start getting it for free to your inbox by clicking on the link down below in the description. Thank you. What's the big story here? The big story is that U.S. markets are important and the Bitcoin ETF is important. And it's a major once in a generation liquidity event, but it's only a small part of the story. And everybody's been so focused on the Bitcoin ETF, they've forgotten the rest of the story. Middle East is coming up. Now we have the M2 crypto exchange, which has launched basically providing a major gateway for Middle Eastern Gulf Arab oil state money to come into Bitcoin. That's one thing. That's a lot of money. We even have rumors like this that Qatar could be looking to make serious Bitcoin purchases. Now, some people have said, oh, $500 billion is probably too much. But even if they buy a few billion dollars of the Bitcoin, it's a massive bet from their sovereign wealth fund. Now, to be clear, sovereign wealth funds are already buying Bitcoin. Singapore's sovereign wealth fund has been buying Bitcoin for a while. And we know for a fact that the UAE and Oman are both mining Bitcoin, state level mining by the government, mining Bitcoin already. Seeing Qatar buy Bitcoin with their sovereign wealth fund will be in line with what we're already seeing in the Middle East. And they got a lot of money, man. They got a lot of money, those Gulf states. So I wouldn't fade that at all. And of course, the Saudis could find... I know it's a, it's a meme in crypto. Saudis are max bidding. Yeah, they might actually start max bidding soon. Watch out. Watch out. And then there's Hong Kong. This is the next part of the story. You see, well, U.S. markets have got a lot of attention, and for very good reason... Hong Kong is coming. See, Hong Kong made moves earlier in 2023 than America started making. They started approving all these different exchanges and forcing banks to work with the companies and all this kind of stuff. Now, 
the regulators said, let's do spot Bitcoin ETFs, let's do spot Ethereum ETFs, let's get the applications in. So I would guess that in the next month or two, maybe three months, we're going to see spot Bitcoin ETFs in Hong Kong as well. And you might think, well, Hong Kong, Lark, why does that matter? It's just some little city in East Asia, man. What's that matter? Hong Kong is a special administrative region of China. And as such, Hong Kong is China's financial window on the world. Mainland money, which is significant, flows through Hong Kong. And you know what's crazy is that despite all the crackdowns in China, despite all the stuff that's going on with government trying to keep people out of crypto, China is one of the absolute biggest crypto markets on earth still. All these like BRC20 tokens, these Bitcoin tokens and all these different inscriptions and things that are happening on chain right now, a lot of that's in China. A lot of that's in China right now. People are going insane over it currently. Big exchange listings still happen for Chinese specific markets. Like they've never gone away. It just sometimes it's harder for Chinese people to, to YOLO into the market. And sometimes it's not as hard. But this ETF product in, in China, in Hong Kong, would be massive. Because guess what? The Chinese are looking and they're saying, holy crap, the Americans are doing the spot Bitcoin ETFs. BlackRock and those other guys are going to get total control of the markets. We need to stake our claim. And they're already behind. They're already behind. You better hurry up, Hong Kong. Come on, man. You guys are behind the ball already. Step it up. Here's an interesting one. Uh, CC15 Capital posted this. I liked the idea. Gold right now, it's a big one. Now he says history of gold. Uh, it's a, a gold ETF. So right now it's got like about 60 billion sitting in it currently. But here's the thing. What if some of that money moves over to Bitcoin? How how long are people going to stay in gold? I mean, gold, yeah, I, gold, okay, cool, whatever. But like, man, it's kind of boring. It doesn't really do very much. Whereas you're looking at Bitcoin ETFs right now, and you're going, man, those are could like 5 to 10x. Like, when's gold going to 5 to 10x? Is gold going to 5x by like the year 2200? I don't know. <laughs> the year 2100 is going to be a while, man. We're not going to be here by the time gold is a 5x. Holy crap. Uh, maybe I'll be like 90. Oh, gold's finally done a 5 x To answer the question, should you buy the new Bitcoin spot ETFs, whether from BlackRock or another company? This is not investment advice, not tax advice. So be sure to consult with a professional when making these sort of decisions. An ETF is just stands for an exchange traded fund. It's basically something that trades like a stock. It's very easy to buy in a brokerage account, but it gives you exposure to a different asset like gold or oil or a stock index or Bitcoin in this case. So should you buy one of the new Bitcoin spot ETFs like the one about to be issued by BlackRock? I would say that really depends. It depends on whether you are thinking instead of buying one of these investments like a money market fund, US government bonds, also known as treasuries or T-bills, corporate bonds, stock indices like the SPY or the QQQs, or another stock index, a stock index mutual fund, investment real estate gold ETFs or physical gold. The problem with these investments is they do not offer the protections that I think you need in the decade that we're in. So for example, no bonds or stocks in the world today can offer you sufficient yield or appreciation to preserve your purchasing power. Bonds don't even come close to get a high enough yield to offset the true rate of inflation, not the fake manipulated CPI that's put out by the US government. But to get enough yield to offset the true rate of inflation, you need to be what's called a yield hog, go for some very high bond yields, and in the process, expose yourself to unnecessary default risk. By contrast, if you invest in a company, a stock, for example, that's able to pass through some of inflationary costs to its customers and thus preserve its margins, you may have some protection, but there's no guarantee that the company will be able to do this in the future thanks to the competitive dynamics of free market. So that's some problems with owning stocks as an inflation or investment hedge. Investment real estate, one bad tenant can easily destroy a year's worth of rents through, of rent through damage or lawsuits. And in fact, it's unlikely you're making very much money in your real estate property once you factor in long-term costs like future new roofs, natural disasters that may or may not be covered by insurance companies, other maintenance, also events like what happened during the pandemic when the U.S. government paused rent payments. If you're dependent on paying a mortgage, you could run into some real financial trouble on your investment property. What's the problem with gold? Gold is outdated monetary technology. It's slow. It's bulky. It's difficult to verify. It's difficult to subdivide. And it's also done a terrible job of preserving purchasing power over the past decade. 
If you have physical gold and you store it in your house, you're tempting thieves. If you own a gold ETF or some sort of paper gold or gold IOU, you have huge counterparty risk. So if you were thinking of buying one of these things, I think you'd actually be much better off buying a Bitcoin spot ETF like BlackRox instead. Bitcoin makes everything better and ETFs are no exception. A Bitcoin spot ETF will indeed help to preserve your purchasing power and protect you from this, protect you from the money printers of the central bankers, protect you from the loss of purchasing power. In other words, the high inflation that we've been seeing and that the dollar really has seen since the founding of the Federal Reserve in 19. 19- 13. So central bankers are not your friends when it comes to maintaining the purchasing power and whether your money going forward in retirement will be able to buy the same things that it does today. There's infinite fiat, US dollars, euros, yen, etc., and only 21 million Bitcoin. And that in itself tells you everything you need to know as to why Bitcoin is going to go into the millions and millions of dollars per coin. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to help to help to support the channel by subscribing. That's really, really important. Hit the like button, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future topic. Also share this video with a friend or family member. That would really help out the channel. So in conclusion here, I would say buy the Bitcoin ETF or one of the Bitcoin ETFs if you must, but I would wish something even better for you. If you've come to this decision, you decide you want to allocate some capital towards the Bitcoin space, I'd like you actually to own the real thing rather than a Bitcoin IOU. The Bitcoin ETF has many, many layers of risk. When you buy it, you need to keep it inside of a brokerage account. And at some point, if you say the wrong things on social media or are otherwise guilty of wrong think, your brokerage account could be frozen temporarily or permanently. It might just be a mistake or misunderstanding, but it could still take you five years to sort everything out and get your money back, in which case bye-bye Bitcoin and bye-bye Bitcoin ETF. If you're holding the bulk of your wealth in a brokerage account, you need to trust the government and bankers to do the right thing for the little guy in a financial crisis rather than doing what's best for themselves. And if you live through 2008, you already know the answer. The bankers and the government officials and regulators, they take care of themselves and their buddies before they look out for you. Here's another problem as well. For all of these Bitcoin ETFs, the vast majority of them are going to be storing their Bitcoin at Coinbase. The only exception looks like Van Eck is storing at Gemini. Fidelity is doing their own custody. But there's going to be a lot of Bitcoin, real Bitcoin, headed to Coinbase and Coinbase custody. Coinbase is already a giant honeypot for Bitcoin and is about to become an even bigger one. It's a target for governments. It's a target for thieves. And if the U.S. government wanted to seize some Bitcoin like it seized physical gold in 1933 under FDR, under Executive Order 6102, it's going to knock on Coinbase's door first. Also, Coinbase could easily make an operational or security error. This has happened before. Crypto exchanges over the past decade have gotten hacked all the time and lost Bitcoin to either external hackers or internal thieves and insiders. And in these cases, there's never enough insurance to make everyone whole, and you might have to wait 10 years or something like the Mt. Gox people are still waiting. So if you own the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF, you really should love and trust government officials regulators, and bankers. In fact, I think you should actually pin up pictures of these beautiful men next to your bed because they're your daddy and they control you and your finances when you own a Bitcoin spot ETF. These are the men whose hands your destiny, your financial future is in because you're not holding Bitcoin, you're holding a Bitcoin IOU when you own the Bitcoin ETF. By contrast, if you're holding real Bitcoin and Coinbase gets hacked or loses all of its coins, what happens to you? Well, if you're not holding them on the exchange, if you're holding them in self-custody on a hardware wallet, and if Coinbase loses its Bitcoin, if these coins, this Bitcoin that was held on Coinbase is really lost forever, then what Coinbase has done is it's just made what is effectively a pro rata distribution to every other holder of Bitcoin in the world. So there's still going to be infinite US dollars and other fiat coming, but now there's only going to be 16 million Bitcoin or whatever available to the world because another few million has been lost. So what does this mean? It means that if you're holding real Bitcoin, real BTC, your real BTC just got much more valuable. Holders of the ETF, if they're storing their their Bitcoin at Coinbase custody, they will be wiped out. Insurance will not be enough to cover everybody. Holders of real Bitcoin will benefit massively because now their individual Bitcoins will be worth more. The spot Bitcoin ETFs are just another synthetic dollar short, and that's a cool thing, but that's not freedom money. Holding your own real Bitcoin is what gives you true freedom. 
You can take it anywhere in the world with you. It's not trapped in a U.S. brokerage account. You can send real Bitcoin to anyone in the world without needing to ask anyone's permission, without needing to ask a banker's permission or a politician's permission. You can take real Bitcoin with you anywhere in the world through TSA, across borders, through airports, on boats and airplanes, in a brain wallet. You can't do that with gold. You can't do that with stocks. And you can't do it with a Bitcoin ETF. The Bitcoin ETF has huge counterparty risk, as we spoke about, BlackRock, Coinbase, government attacks, other thieves. By contrast, Bitcoin has zero counterparty risk. If you store it on a hardware wallet and thus control your own private keys, rather than trusting someone else like Coinbase to control the keys. Bitcoin is what's called a bearer asset. It's a true bearer asset like physical gold, but it's gold for the 21st century. Unlike gold, you can send Bitcoin across digital channels rather than needing to ship it on trucks or boats or in armored cars or in planes, which is extremely expensive and inefficient. Unlike gold, Bitcoin can be easily and cheaply assayed or verified in a matter of minutes. Unlike gold, Bitcoin can be easily subdivided and zapped anywhere in the world. So in conclusion, I'd say buy a Bitcoin spot ETF if you must, but don't buy it if you can hold the real thing instead. And if you're worried about holding it in a retirement account, there are now ways to hold real Bitcoin, either using Swan, companies like Swan, or Unchained that will allow you to own Bitcoin in a retirement account. So I'd encourage all of you, especially if you're new to the channel, learn how to use the world's most powerful monetary technology, which is Bitcoin. This is like learning how to use the internet in the 90s and early 2000s. If you learned how to use these tools, it really empowered you and also enriched you. Learning how to use Bitcoin is going to be an essential skill for those who want to remain free in the coming decade of huge political and economic upheaval. You know you can't trust the bankers, so learn how to be your own bank. You can watch 